In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. Hearty welcome to each one of you, my dear sisters and brothers. We begin a new week today, a new phase. For some of you, maybe going out for the first time, lockdown is being uh, gradually lifted in many parts of India, but uh, not here at home in Maharashtra uh, and uh, other parts of the world, in Europe. Let's pray today as, uh, as we are in a new phase, begin a new week. I want to pray for every unit, for every family. We pray for this, you pray for your family, sisters pray for their community, fathers for their parish, friends for your dear ones at home, that this week be one which is significant in their lives. They grow in spirituality, grow in confidence, grow in trust in the Father. The theme of these days in the scriptures has been trust in the Father, and trust in God. Put ourselves in God's hands and ask Him to pray for us. We just finished the Feast of the Sacred Heart, Immaculate Heart of Mary. We ask them to show their immense love for us. And so, brothers and sisters, friends, families, children, youth, let's pray for each other and begin the sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking his forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Kindly sit. A reading from the second book of the kings. The king of Assyria invaded the whole country and coming to Samaria led a siege to it for three years. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and deported the Israelites to Assyria. He settled them in Hala on the Habor, a river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. This happened because the Israelites, Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God who brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the grip of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They worshipped other gods. They followed the practices of the nations that the Lord has disposed for them. And yet, through all the prophets and all the seers, the Lord had given Israel and Judah this warning. Turn from your wicked ways 
and keep my commandments and my law in accordance with the entire law I laid down for your fathers and delivered them through my servants, the prophets. But they would not listen. They were more stubborn than their ancestors had been who had no faith in the Lord their God. They despised his laws and the covenant he had made with their ancestors and the warning he had given them. For this the Lord was enraged with Israel and thrust them away from him. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response, hear us, O Lord, and help us. Kindly repeat, hear us, O Lord, and help us. O God, you have rejected us and broken us. You have been angry. Come back to us. Our response, hear us, O Lord, and help us. You have made the earth quake, torn it open. Repair what is shattered for its ways. You have inflicted hardships on your people and made us drink a wine that dazed us. Our response, hear us, O Lord, and help us. Will you utterly reject us, O God, and no longer march with our armies? Give us help against the foe, for the help of man is vain. Our response, hear us, O Lord, and help us. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is something alive and active. It can judge secret emotions and thoughts. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye. Then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, friends, families, youth, children, religious sisters in particular, we continue our journey, journey to holiness that Jesus uh, is taking us along as we go ahead and read and participate in this Eucharist. The first reading is from the Book of Kings, and we heard a detailed exposition of what had happened when uh, the, the prophet Elijah was consistently reminding the people that they had to turn to the Lord. And now we have, uh, again, uh, a report here of how the Israelites had betrayed God. He had brought them across the Red Sea. He had liberated them from Pharaoh. He had fed them in the desert. He had given them a land flowing with milk and honey. But gradually, as happens to all of us, they forgot what God had done for them and they fell into worshipping other gods. And we know the history of what's here in the Kings. The Assyrians came and invaded, took Samarians out. And that was the custom at that time, that if a country conquer another country, they would take away lots of the citizens, particularly the 
more influential ones, the more um, uh, wealthy ones. And it was a strategic reason that they, they, they would not be able to get the people once again to revolt against this uh, outside invaders. This was al always, that was the practice. And therefore they had taken, uh, they calculate, historian tells us, between one tenth and one fifteenth of the population of Samaria was taken away to Assyria. And they, we heard in the reading, uh, they betrayed Yahweh, began, they, uh, following other gods, so also morality must have gone down. But uh, the prophets keep on telling them consistently, can turn back to the Lord. The prophet is one who calls the people, speaks on behalf of God, and through them speaks also to us. But the gospel, when we come to the gospel of Matthew, we continue hearing the same discourse of Jesus, which is, we don't know if Matthew put it together because it's the Sermon on the Mount and the very next chapter. And now here we are in chapter seven, uh, where he keeps on still the discourse of our Lord. And here very strongly he speaks about not judging others. One says uh, to not judge others, think of ourselves. I was wondering, sisters and brothers, yesterday when I was uh, speaking, giving a catechesis on prayer, remember I said uh, that we must pray ideally at least, we certainly uh, meals, we expect that everybody prays, but we, at the beginning of the day when we get up, we pray and we offer the whole day to the Lord. Even if all, all I do is for you, even if you say us that, you're conscious of God and offering everything to God. Another very appropriate and I think essential time to pray is at the end of the day. When husband and wife or the whole family get together, you say the rosary, but at the night before going to bed, once again, uh, telling the Lord, thank you for all the good things and thank you for all the crosses that you've given me during the course of the day. But I think also something from this gospel should uh, influence our prayer at the end of the day. That is, sisters and brothers, I think we should... Uh, spend a little time, moments, later on, if you, once you get a customer, it will become minutes, uh, when, uh, and uh, more minutes, just reflecting on the day and seeing how you really fulfilled your mission of, for the day. What did you do during the course of the day? A little examination of conscience. I think one of the catechesis of the prayers was on examination of conscience. But a little, uh, you don't have to make a very formal examination unless you feel inspired to. But looking, looking back at the day, what did I do? Judge yourself. And the gospel says, judge not and you will not be judged. Don't judge others. But uh, leave that to God, because there's nothing you can do. Uh, if you judge others, you, you get unhappy, you can't change them, you can't, uh, you, it, you're not accountable for what their faults are. You're not, uh, you're not, God is not going to ask you, why did this person do this, unless, that, unless you're responsible for his or her formation. You're a parent, you're a teacher, uh, you're a superior. Otherwise, you bother about yourself. At the end of the day, this is a very good uh, exercise it's a very good uh, human exercise, but spiritual exercise also to look at your life of the day. A minute, even if it's in bed, just a minute, see what happened today. Uh, did I get angry? Did I do my work well in the office? Did I study hard? I was at school. Did I fight with somebody? Was I honest? Uh, what that immediately shows us how we could be better. An examination of conscience. Saint Ignatius uh, was a master of that, and again he got his uh, all his people joining his order to do that. I think the uh, all businessmen would be good, business, successful businessmen would be doing that. End of the day to see how the business went. We are in a spiritual business to see our own gro growth and holiness and the families. And so at the end of the day, if we can spend a few moments thanking the Lord, judging ourselves. Take a message from our today's gospel not to judge others, but to judge ourselves. Focus on how, what did I do? How could I come uh, closer to the Lord? How could I be a better disciple of the Lord? It will help us give you better, much better peace of mind. It will help you for the next day. It will also transform your life. And this is also very true prayer, this examination of conscience. 
uh, I read a very interesting uh, fable in Aesop's fable. Uh, and the interesting, the, this fable says, when we are born, there are two bags around our neck. One bag in front, one bag behind. And the bag in front has got all the faults of others. The one behind has got all my own faults. So I consistently see all the faults of others and I'm totally blind to what the fa my own faults are. Uh, beautiful uh, message in this little fable of Aesop. But uh, remember the fable and remember therefore with that fable that every night we look into our lives, look into our day and say, thank you Lord and sorry Lord for this, this, this. I'll do better tomorrow. Judge not and you will not be judged. God bless. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread which we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, May we come to share in his divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept a sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for, for our, our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, this sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest Hosanna
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be quest eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let's prepare ourselves for our communion in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, as yet your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the smingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us receive. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy 
that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be a sure pledge for us of our redemption. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks once again. Have a nice week. Safe days ahead. And uh, let's grow again in the Lord's call to us to grow in holiness. Today is the beginning of the week, Monday, and we always have a scripture uh, talk, catechesis. So this evening we'll have once again Father Harry Vaz will uh, complete the trilogy on the prophets. We, we, the prophets are, we, we hear about the prophets in the first reading normally. You know? So he'll complete that. And after that we'll have a prayer session from Ashwin. Uh, you, you're in for a little surprise. We were just sort of giving a break to the priests over here in my community who are leading the prayer, and we've asked the priests from outside. So you will see a little different chapel, and uh, I hope that uh, other chapel, other setting will help you to pray better. So once again, God bless you. Stay safe, stay happy, stay united, and in God's love. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. 
we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.